Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's presentation will be about SSI position feedback and interfaces. Uh, it's going to be the third in our series of position feedback uh, updates and introductions. Uh, what we'd like to do is, with this presentation, uh, obviously we would like to just go over a brief uh, review of absolute position feedback, uh, just to kind of keep that uh, fresh in our memory. And then we'll talk a little bit about what SSI is for those of us that aren't familiar with SSI. And then a brief uh, discussion on why someone would use SSI feedback for their applications. And then where are they used? Uh, there's a lot of applications that, you know, different technologies are used and uh, SSI may be the ideal fit for various reasons. And then um, not only discuss the SSI type of uh, encoders, but also the interfaces to help uh, complete the application and provide the complete solution for position feedback back to the controller. Okay, a uh, brief review of absolute position feedback. Uh, absolute position feedback, it produces a signal relative to shaft position. So for example, in a single turn application, uh, we're looking at zero to 360 position, uh, or in multi-turn applications where the shaft is capable of monitoring position over multiple turns, such as in a lead screw or uh, jack shaft type of application. Uh, it can tell us exactly where we are uh, throughout that multi-turn travel of that, that lead screw. Uh, there's a variety of designs to meet many requirements. Uh, today we're going to be talking about SSI type outputs, but there's a lot of different output types, whether they're digital, analog, networked, uh, lots of different mechanical configurations to meet different uh, single-turn and multi-turn. Uh, there's a lot of technologies that provide advanced features, uh, specifically with the Networked encoders, uh, we have, there's a lot of advanced features such as uh, automatic position zeroing, uh, scaling, so we can get the uh, exact number of counts per rotation that we want. Instead of having a fixed value, we can program that within the encoder. Um, and um, select the output that best suits the application and control architecture. Uh, in some applications, um, a simple analog output would work great applications, having an encoder just won't do because uh, onboard electronics won't survive the environment. That's where we may select a, a resolver for that type of position feedback. And as I said, today we're going to focus on SSI encoders and SSI position feedback. So what is SSI? Uh, SSI is an acronym uh, that stands for Synchronous Serial Interface. With a synchronous serial interface, we transmit encoder position on a single pair of conductors. Uh, there's a pair of conductors uh, called the clock signal, uh, which is controlled by the master. And that master sends a pulse to the slave device. Uh, in this case, we're talking about uh, a position sensor. And then that slave device sends back a data bit uh, relative to the position or whatever its measurement point is um, to the master. The clock pulse train from the controller tends, tells the encoder or feedback device when to send out the data bits. It sends out that clock sequence in a predefined number of cycles. Um, in most cases uh, with SSI, it's going to be a 24-bit cycle, but it could be a little bit more or a little bit less. And for each clock pulse, one bit of position data is transmitted to the controller for one output clock pulse. And okay. once it's finished its sequence, we will have the complete data word coming back from that sensor. So what are some of the benefits of using SSI? Well, uh, as, you, as was obvious from the previous picture, uh, it simplifies cabling, uh, especially when compared to parallel outputs. Uh, it provides a very fast communication speed. Um, in many of the applications, uh, you'll have, uh, say, for example, a traditional parallel type encoder. Your fastest update rate you may be able to get with a um, 
position update may be around 50 kilohertz or maybe every you know 10 milliseconds you know very slow um, with SSI we can clock that sensor at frequencies up to 1.5 megahertz uh, getting that position data very very quickly and transmitting it to the controller at, at a very fast rate um, and because the signal is differential it increases noise immunity um, for very noisy environments maybe a traditional analog signal um, we would have a lot of noise riding on an analog signal which may cause uh, erroneous position data feedback um, the SSI signal eliminates that and because of the simplicity in wiring and the simplicity of the output we can provide a similar encoder at a lower cost than you can with some of the traditional output types so what are some typical applications for uh, an SSI encoder uh, just like with any encoder uh, you'll find them used in a lot of applications um, you know indexing tables where we're simply monitoring through you know say in a manufacturing environment where we have a rotary table and we're doing part assembly but we need to know exactly where that part is as it's going through its cycle uh, we can put an encoder on there and monitor uh, the shaft position and the um, table position relative to uh, the part placement um, Speaking of some very rugged environments uh, where the AMCI uh, DC25 encoder shines because of its resolver based technology, uh, outdoor applications such as drawbridges, uh, you know, they need to know exactly where that drawbridge is as it, it goes in its up and down position. Um, we've had applications where customers have used uh, the Duracoder and these types of applications. We're not simply monitoring 0 to 360, we might be monitoring 0 to 45, 0 to 90 degrees but still that same type of sensor app, uh, technology applies for these applications. And then because of the ruggedness of the sensor, also uh, on vehicle monitoring, uh, we've done some military applications uh, where uh, the SSI output has been used to go directly to a controller. Uh, in these applications, they selected the SSI because of the noise immunity and also because of the uh, simplicity of the wiring. And uh, for single turn applications, we can offer multiple types of or outputs or f physical packages, uh, both uh, the standard size 25 package, your standard Europe. flange mounts, but also European mountings, and then the smaller package, uh, the ME15 for your more economical or uh, space restricted applications. Uh, for multi-turn applications, uh, we have our multi-turn uh, DC25. Uh, SSI is an excellent choice for high-resolution applications. Uh, for applications in metal forming, uh, where we need to monitor shut height, which is the distance uh, between the dies uh, as the uh, press makes a stroke. Uh, that's a very high-precision application to make sure that we're not damaging the die in some way. Um, they would use an SSI encoder for height adjustment. Um, or for applications in, say, a steel mill or a paper mill uh, where they have to position the rolls for, for roll thickness, uh, we would use an SSI encoder for that because typically those adjustments are done using uh, lead screw arrangements. You could put the SSI encoder on those lead screws and monitor the adjustments accordingly. Uh, another application would be cable reels, cable drums. Uh, lots of your cranes, uh, you know, ship loading, unloading, uh, crane applications, gantries, whatnot. Uh, there's going to be a, some sort of roll, some sort of cable uh, as that uh, hoist is going up and down. The encoder could be mounted to the same axis that that cable drum is on. And because it's a multi turn encoder, we can monitor the amount of payout of that material on the cable drum whether uh, connected directly to the shaft of the cable drum or using one of these uh, cable reel assemblies that's uh, in the right side of that picture. Uh, another one would be uh, overhead gantry positioning. Um, as that overhead gantry is moving along uh, the plant floor, uh, the motors on both sides need to be, need to be making sure that the uh, both sides are in a similar position. We're not getting skew 
uh, as that gantry or overhead crane is moving along the plant. Uh, they would use, in these applications, they use one or more uh, encoder for monitoring position of that uh, overhead hoist. Now, for providing the complete solution, we've talked about the sensor that's used for these types of applications. Uh, the interfaces, uh, we offer a wide range of interfaces. Uh, for people that have PLC controls, uh, we offer plug-in module solutions uh, for the complete line of Allen Bradley controllers, anywhere from the control logics going all the way back to the Slick 500, micro logics, compact logics, even the PLC5, uh, we have plug-in modules. For customers using GE PLCs, we can provide plug-in modules for the GE 9030, the 9070, and the newer RX series processors, the 3i and 7i. For uh, the non-plug-in module solutions, uh, whether, whether the person doesn't have one of those PLCs just listed or they just want to use a distributed type solution, uh, whether they're using our AnyNet I.O. or our Nexus PL, uh, type specialty I.O., uh, we can provide SSI interfaces for those as well on the various industrial networks, uh, including uh, Ethernet IP, which covers not only the Rockwell Automation PLCs, but uh, Amron PLCs, um, other P PLCs, Mitsubishi has uh, Ethernet IP, even Automation Direct PLCs have Ethernet IP. For, for users of Modicon PLCs, we do the Modbus TCP <coughs> and the Modbus RTU. Uh, for Siemens, we do the Profibus, and uh, offering now uh, one of the newer network interfaces, we have Profinet and um, device net as well. So as you can see, we can not only provide the sensor, but also the sensor interface. And the reason why someone would choose to use a plug-in module as opposed to an SSI to say serial decoder is that plug-in module or networked interface allows you to, to maintain the high resolution that the SSI provides and also the high speed connection to the PLC that some of those SSI to serial converters uh, can't offer. Uh, so why choose SSI? You might have uh, applications where you are using, say, a parallel type encoder right now or an analog or some other type of sensor. Uh, well, the simplicity of the interface. Uh, six wires for an SSI encoder, and that includes power. Uh, versus 14 for a simple 12-bit single-turn application. As you can see, um, wiring can become a challenge uh, when dealing with the high-resolution uh, single-turn uh, parallel output or 20-plus-bit multi-turn encoders. Uh, even resolvers, you know, when you're going into multi-turn applications, you're dealing with 12-plus wires. Um, SSI may help reduce uh, installation costs. There's a wide range of interface choices, uh, as we discussed, whether it's a plug-in module or a distributed I.O. solution. So there's a lot of uh, uses, a wide range of uses, and people are very familiar with this type of interface. It's also an industry standard. Uh, it's been in use since 1984. It was developed by Stegman, and there's a lot of people manufacturing SSI sensors that uh, not only uh, rotary encoders like the AMCI DC25 and ME15, but linear sensors. Uh, if, you have cust if you have applications where you need to use linear position feedback, uh, like the rod style encoders, those are often available in SSI. Using one of those sensors with an AMCI feedback interface is a great choice uh, because it allows you to maintain high resolution uh, on those linear sensors over longer distances than you can with, say, a traditional analog output on those sensors. Um, also, some of the non-contact sensors that you might run across. Uh, we had discussions yesterday uh, with a customer using uh, a laser-type device where the laser, because they wanted a non-contact sensor and simple installation, they used a laser pointing it at a overhead gantry. Uh, and as that gantry moved uh, to and from uh, throughout the plant, they're able to maintain position, monitoring it through a laser, and sending it back to the controller through an SSI interface. So a lot of uses, not only uh, for rotary applications, 
but other applications using uh, AMCI SSI feedback interfaces. Okay, at this point, um, I'll open up the uh, presentation to questions that anybody may have. Uh, if not, um, I thank you for your time, and everybody have a great day.